<clears throat> I find it quite important to inform all of you that while this video is labeled as a movie, because of its format and length, it does not tell an entire story rather just the second half of one. My previous video chronicled the first half of this adventure, and while I will give you all a complete recap of everything that took place then, I would highly recommend that if you have not done so already, you watch the first half of this story, well, first. You see, a series of unfortunate events instigated by a neighboring group had made the beginning of my adventure miserable. It had driven me to craft an entire plan of revenge against this group, a grand plan. And while plans are made to have the future turn out in your favor, twists in our plot had seemed to cause the contrary. So, my name is Stevie. Sit back, relax, and enjoy the movie. Let me give you all more of an exact recap of everything that took place in my last video. Like I said, that was the beginning of our story, and it all started on Thursday, May 7th, where and how everyone in Rust begins as a naked on the beach. I loaded into a server on the day it reset as a solo player. No friends were coming to play with me. That is by far the most difficult way to play Rust, but I had an idea for how I would make this challenge a little bit less challenging. It was all in the base location. Of course, I wanted to be beside a big monument. I chose launch site because it brings a lot of PvP in action, more fun. But I chose to build in the woods beside launch site because groups couldn't easily track me back to my base if I pissed them off. And more importantly, no groups would be living near me, as groups tend to stay away from the woods. It was a great idea, right? <laughs> Don't let the upbeat music fool you. My first day of this wipe was not easy at all. You see, shortly after I built my base, a group moved into my area. I didn't know exactly how many of them there were, so I went over to do some digging, and I found out that there were at least five of them. So I decided I would ignore them and continue with my day's goal of getting my base completely built in my compound. Down. But them living so close by proved to be problematic. Everywhere I went, I ran into them, and I could hardly progress with my wipe. Several hours of unfavorable encounters with them passed until I decided I had had enough. They would become my enemy, and I would do everything in my power to make their wipe as miserable as possible, as they had made my first day just that. Now, this was going to be a pretty tall task to take on, but I had a plan to do it. First, I needed information. I needed to figure out exactly how many of them there were. Then, after doing a little more digging, I realized there were at least six. I figured out exactly how they were geared, so I knew what firepower I was up against. I took over a little 2 by one next to where they had built to use as a proxy base. I could spy on them from it, and I could also use it as a little depot station to drop off gear sets I stole from them so that they didn't figure out where my main base was. Everything was going great. I upgraded my base before I logged off that Thursday night, and then when I woke up on Friday, I grabbed a CCTV camera that I had found the previous night, and I put it on that little 2x1. Now, with the camera station in my main base, I could spy on their every move. But despite knowing that they were 100% online at the time, I saw no movement coming from their base, which was very weird. That could only mean one thing. They had moved. But I had already spent so much of my time and effort this wipe on them, plotting ways to take them down, planning to make them miserable. And I had yet to accomplish that, and I couldn't stand to think that they just moved to a different base location and were progressing on with their wipe happily ever after, all while I was significantly behind my schedule of having fun because of them. So, of course, I set out to find them. I went everywhere. I asked everyone I ran into if they had seen these guys, but no one had. It was feeling like a lost cause, a waste of time. But then, I heard an explosion coming from launch site, and I rode there on a horse to get killed by a guy named Leek, and he was part of the group I was looking for, AIM, my enemies. So by process of elimination, I figured out the rough area that they probably lived in if they were running a launch site, and sure enough, in heading over to that area, I found their base. <laughs> gotcha. 
Under the cover of night, I ran over to their base location on a horse with some resources and built two 2x1s on protruding rocks on opposite sides of their base. And on these 2x1s, I put CCTV cameras. Now I could actually spy on them on the base that they were actually living in. Now at this point I knew I needed a plan, a grand plan to take down this group, but at the time I didn't need to think of it. I knew that whatever the plan would be, I would need gear sets to make it happen. And in order to get gear sets, I needed to do some PVPing. And that's exactly what I spent my time on for the rest of the second day of Wipe. Now, you may have noticed I had teammates, even though I said I was solo. I forgot to mention, but on the first day of Wipe, I made an alliance with my next door neighbor, Sketching. He was also a solo player yeah, sure. at the time. It was going to be hard enough taking down aim by myself. I didn't need my next door neighbor shooting at me as well. That's why I made the alliance in the first place. And when I woke up on the second day of Wipe, Friday, which I've already recapped for you guys, I had another teammate in the bottom left hand corner of my screen named Augie. Apparently Sketching had made another ally, and by the end of Friday, I had a third teammate named Yoink. Now, although I wasn't in voice communications with these guys, and obviously I didn't live with them, and I didn't share resources with them by any means, I helped them with some fights that they got into, and they reciprocated that favor back to me when I needed help. Now, Friday was about to come to a close. It was very successful. We'd gotten a bunch of guns and gear that we would need to take down AIM. All that we needed to do next, or all that I needed to do next, was come up with a plan on exactly how I was going to take them down, which is easier said than done. But in taking a peek through my camera system at their base right before I logged off that Friday night, I realized they had destroyed my cameras. They knew that I was watching them and that would make this next coming day much, much harder. And that is exactly where my last video came to a close. Our story took a pause right before everything was going to go down, right before I would need to come up with this grand plan. So, here we are, Saturday, May 9th, the third day of Wipe. You know what would really suck is if I was raided, that'd actually be depressing. Oh. Oh. Let's go. Augie and um, sketching are online. Good, oh, good, good morning, fellows. Smiley face. So what I need to find out is someone's taking Bradley. Is what happened to my one by twos? What happened to the cameras? Because if they raided the one by twos, that would be bad. But if they just, because the cameras are pretty easy to destroy. So if they just des destroyed the cameras I placed, I could replace them. Obviously, I need to find cameras, but that's much easier than having to make a whole new base over there. So, um, let's see. I'm going to F1 kill and spawn over there to see what's up. Spec one. Okay. It's not rated. They upgraded. Okay, they just... Okay, what they probably did was they just shot out the cameras from their roof. They should have rated the one by twos, but... It's fine. I'll go see what happened to the other one. This one's not rated either. Yeah. Okay. So they just they just destroyed the cameras, which is best case scenario. They <laughs> they even left the the solar panels on the roof. So all I have to do is get a couple more CCTVs, and I can bring it back over and hook them back up. Obviously, they know. I mean, after a little bit of time, they're gonna notice the cameras are back on the one by twos. But still, it'll give me. Um, I'll be able to, to do some surveillance before they figure it out, you know? You know what I could even do, which m it may not be a bad idea. Um, oh, I hear somebody. Is, oh, I thought he lived. Is make a shop for CCTVs. Like I sell, I could, I don't know. I could sell like sulfur, high qual, metal frag, stuff like that. And buy CCTVs. Cause there's, there's so much harder to find now. Um, I'm gonna give this guy. 
I don't need that. I don't need that. Um, because they're so much harder to find now, and I'm not. It's it's not. I'm not going to do much raiding solo. I don't think. So I don't really need an abundance of sulfur. So maybe a quicker way, and make it like making a shot maybe a quicker way to get CCTVs than trying to find them myself. I think. One thousand for one CCTV. All right, so we got sulfur, sulfur ore, scrap, metal frags, high qual that we're all selling for CCTVs. And now, everyone, look at Sleepy's shop in O nine. Oh, I have chat muted best deals around map so now hopefully people will see what is going on outside <laughs> why are people hitting with rocks but now hopefully people will look and if they like the deals they'll come i'll just spam chat a bit more now for a while after i built the shop i did quite a bit of farming outside of launch site but then i realized how impatient i actually was I wanted CCTVs now. I couldn't wait for people to come to my shop. So I decided that I would go to launch site to find them. And because Augie and Sketching were online at the time, I asked if they wanted to come with me. Let's see what he says. Oh, Sketching, the legend. He gave me two CCTVs, let's go. Oh my God. Yeah, sure, let me, let me uh, depot. Well, this is, I mean, this is all I really needed, but I mean, I'll still go. Wait, who's this other guy? Epic Cookie. So we're just getting more and more teammates. What the heck? How does Sketching know all these people? All right, after this launch, I run. I can go set these CCTVs up. Um, I want to ask him if he had because we can just communicate through team chat. I don't have to do it through notes. That's why I'm asking him if he has chat on. Oh, there's a guy. Are there two? Are they full metal? Oh! Oh my God! Oh! What the hell? M2. Oh, I didn't grab it. Oh, sketching got the M2. There's, an there's another M2. <laughs> What the f- <laughs> What the hell just happened? <gasps> oh... Wait, these must have been the guys that took Bradley. Because Bradley just got taken. And two of them won the fight and had it all. Two M2s and like four AKs? What? That's so unlucky for them, but... Holy shit. After making this extremely lucky play, Sketching and I had to lay low for a little bit. We had killed two members of a clan called DS, and we had no idea where they lived or how many of them there were, so we wanted to be safe and just stay quiet until things settled down. So for the next 30 minutes or so, I ate my breakfast that Saturday morning and thought of a way to get it aim because I wanted surveillance back on their compound, but if I just put CCTV cameras on the two two by ones that already had cameras on them, then it would just be a matter of time before AIM found the cameras again. I needed to do something slightly different. What I came up with was a third two by one, but this one was gonna be a little bit different. It was gonna be as far away as possible while still in range of being able to see their gate so that hopefully in looking around their area, they wouldn't notice the base. And if they did, they wouldn't think anything of it because it was so far away. After building the third two by one and installing a camera system on it, I would then go to the other two by ones and try to get CCTVs back on them. 
Now, if I was caught and wasn't able to place them, that would be fine because I would have that third two by one. But if I was able to get the CCTVs back on the two by ones, I would have three angles of surveillance on their compound the backside, the front side, and the area in between their gate and launch site. For the grand plan that I would eventually come up with, this surveillance would be invaluable. So that next morning, Sketching and I headed off to Ames base. He didn't really know what we were doing, but decided to tag along anyways. This is definitely going to be tricky because I need to be able to see that like it needs to be like a functional surveillance station, but if it's anywhere near their base, they're just, they're going to treat it like it, one of the other two by ones, and they're going to check it, and they're going to find the camera, you know, so. I can't even see their gate from here. Maybe be around here-ish. Eh, this isn't really out of the way enough. This is right in between them and launch, so they're going to see the camera, because they're going to pass it every time they go to launch site. <sighs> Maybe on this ridge over here, like a side angle view. Yeah, like somewhere over here. I can't really see their gate, but I bet if I get up here a little bit, I could probably see if it swung open. Oh yeah, this is good. The tree's kind of blocking a little bit of it. I bet if I made it two stories high, it could see down into the gate. Like when people leave the gate and stuff. Um, I'm gonna make the door over here. And we can't get seen now, because if they see us making it, then we're screwed. Because they'll obviously be curious. I'm thinking if it's two story, we have a stairway here. Wait, sketching is gonna get seen? I don't know how to get his attention. Come down, sketching. Oh my goodness. There's a scrap helicopter going in their base too. That's what he's probably looking at. Oh my god. That might have seen us. <laughs> I bet he has no idea what's happening right now. gonna need all the stuff for uh camera station but i can get that later now we just have to not get seen running away i like this spot i think it's good that it's in the trees oh i don't want to go to that oh oh my god them, you killed him. He was loaded. Nice. Okay, now the other one by twos. Oh, this would be a sneaky little angle, wouldn't it? <laughs> So, um, even though it's not going to get as much sun right here, the solar panel, 
I want to put the camera on this wall there and then the solar panel will kind of make the camera less obvious just gotta get it facing the right way like that Ooh, I think someone's coming hey. <laughs> oh no Oh no, this is bad. Okay, I need to grab the gun. Maybe he comes out to get my set. Alright, I can't loot my clothes. Because then I'll see the clothes going off the body and I'll know I'm looting it. Waiting game. They're coming. I need this this close. No, no. All right, I can't loot the other body. I just need to take this and leave right away. Grab the camera. Don't want to waste one. Come on. Oh my god. Let's go. Let's go. Oh my god. That kind of worked out perfectly, didn't it? Now, they're going to be suspicious, of course, but I expect after I left, they went to the one by twos. They checked them out. They saw that there were no cameras, and if everything went according to plan, why can I add that? Hopefully, they didn't find the camera on the third one by two. Okay, but I say that, and I can't type it in for some reason. Let's try again. My TGDS three. <laughs> Let's go. They're calling an airdrop. Nice. This is actually a really good view, though. For the next little while, I stayed away from Ames Base. I didn't want them getting too paranoid of me lurking around their area. I stayed in mine and focused on some PVPing, just having a good time. You know you want to run by. Come on now. Um, that's a pretty big group outside, isn't it? Am I about to get raided? Might actually be getting raided. Very bizarre. I could have, I could have sworn they're about to rock, start rocketing. Oh, that's awkward. Sleepy, sleepy, you got another MC from them. <laughs> they gotta be furious. So DS is, um, they're who we took the M2s from earlier today. I don't know how deep they are. I know Season's really deep, and those were the guys we just killed. 
Now, all that makes me think is that there's no way that neither of those two groups come to rate either my base or sketchings, you know? <laughs> Shots are getting closer. Oh. That might be getting raided actually this time. <laughs> it's like deja vu. Oh. He's gotta be dead to the guy shooting him in the back. There's one more somewhere. There's another M2. Where's that? Is that where the other M2's coming from? Wait, who is this guy? I've never seen him. Oh! He just made a play on him. I have another teammate now. <laughs> Named Molly Wop. At the time, clearly, I was paranoid. I thought there was no way we stripped two M2s off of two clan members without that clan coming to raid us imminently. So I was pretty concerned when a couple large groups started running towards my base that they had those intentions. Of course, in hindsight, I now know that they didn't, so killing them from my roof feels pretty scummy, so for that reason, at the time, I elected not to go out and loot any of the kits, instead, I let Sketching and his pals have them. Anyways, for the next few hours, I continued to mosey around my area, occasionally checking on the cameras to see what AIM was up to. I took a break for a couple of hours, then got back on, and at this point, it was late Saturday night. Four to five of the AIM members were online, and so I decided that was when my review Revenge would commence. Throughout the day, I had been thinking of ways of getting back at them, but I hadn't actually orchestrated these thoughts into a plan. So as I sat down, eating a very late dinner, watching them through my surveillance station, I constructed a grand plan. Now, I didn't show you guys earlier, but earlier that day, when I was setting up one of my camera stations to look at AIM's base, I'd gone close to their walls to give their compound a thorough inspection. No matter how big or small a base is, it will have a flaw. And bases with compounds, well, <laughs> they usually have multiple flaws. So I went over with a building plan and checked around the edge of their compound. There were external TCs blocking me from building pretty much everywhere, but not in one crucial spot. It was outside their back gate. It seemed like there should have been a tool cupboard there, but they had just forgot to place one because I could build very close to that gate and I could get a base as big as a two by two down in that area. Of course, building my own tool cupboard there would give me the ability to build over their compound walls whenever I pleased, but I had a bigger idea for how I would take advantage of this flaw. If there's anything that I've learned from the thousands and thousands of hours I've played Rust, it's that if you piss off a group and they feel like they have a significant advantage over you, they will raid you at some point. And if said group decided to raid you right away, immediately while you were online, they would be bound to make a mistake. So while eating dinner with all these thoughts circulating in my head, I came up with this as my grand plan. I would bring over a bunch of resources to that active camera station. Then I would use the camera station to watch them. And once they left their base, on a scrap helicopter out their front gate, whatever the case may be, just leaving their area, I would run over to their compound with all of those resources, and in that gap of privilege, I would set up a 2x2. Two two. Out of sheet metal, so of course it was difficult to raid, and once they got back to their base from wherever they went, they would be pretty pissed. I would be if I were a group in that situation, but even though it was sheet metal, they would still surely attempt to raid it. It was just a 2x2, two two, and it was sitting inches away from one of their gates. It would definitely not be my first time defending a raid from a little shack. I had done it on many occasions throughout my time playing Rust, and bases much less secure than a sheet metal 2x2. Two two. I had three 2x1 flying bases that would each have guns inside. I had five sleeping bags nearby. If Sketching and Yoink decided to tag along, I was certain we could defend a raid, even though they would be looking down on that little 2x2 two two from their roof. And once we did so, we would take the kits that we would get from them and maybe even explosives and make our way back back 
to our bases. That would leave me throwing the last punch against them. They would be paranoid. They would have to raid that 2x2 two two at a later point. From then on out, they wouldn't think of me as that guy that was sitting outside of their base with a water pipe, but they would think of me as a legitimate threat. And that fear of me that they would then have would leave me satisfied. That was my revenge. That was the grand plan. And so, the next morning, I ran over to bring resources to the two-story, two-by-one surveillance station to begin to make that plan a reality. Hmm. They're on their roof. I can't get seen, but I think if I come from the back, I'll be fine. And roll it. Put all of this in there. I'm gonna need garage doors, but I'll just bring them when I come and make the base. And then, according to plan, I waited and watched through my camera station throughout the day into the night until the scrap helicopter was off their roof. They had left. This was the perfect time to go. Now, I did see one guy still on the roof, so I waited a few minutes to see if he would leave as well, and I didn't see him for a while. And so I decided then was a good time to go ahead and build that two by two. Even if one of them was still in the base, it's better than four or five being there. The next step of the plan commenced. All right, Yoink said he'd spawn in and help, so I'm gonna give him a double barrel and Five slugs. I'll take the same for myself. Okay, I don't want to take all the resources now. Because if that guy, if that one guy that is still on, if he's just sitting on the roof and you hear someone building, we could lose all these resources and lose our shot of doing this. So I'm going to go over, knock on their gate, maybe build a couple foundations just to try to bait him to react. Because ideally he's AFK and I think he's AFK and if he is AFK and I start making all this noise, he's he's not going to react, he's not going to do anything. I mean, that would be what we want. Spam their code lock. Shoot. See if anyone comes to the roof for anything. I think I'm good to get the resources and go ahead and make the base. I mean, I, I didn't hear a peep. I'm nervous. <laughs> All right, I got my gear set here. I could, uh, I'm gonna leave the garage doors for now. I just wanna get the base down first and then I'll bring the garage doors over afterwards. You looks right, they could be home soon, which would be bad. I'm waiting for my code locks to craft before I start building. <laughs> Imagine we place the first foundation right as they're flying back in and we just get sprayed down. <laughs> They could be on oil. If they went to oil, then they're going to be gone for a while. And we have plenty of time. Here goes nothing. Okay, walls are all sealed. I want to make a second story, honestly. I have more metal frags. Oh my god. A helicopter's coming. They're coming back! <laughs> oh no! <laughs> They're home! They're home! <laughs> oh no, dude. I need a little bit of time to make doors. Push out. He's gotta buy me a little bit of time so I can place these doors. Just in case they start raiding. Immediately. I don't have the garage doors with me. This is really bad. I should have brought them. Oh. Okay, I don't want to give anything away until we get the garage doors over here and another kit or two. I'm gonna have one kill and spawn in main base. I mean, them coming home earlier than we thought isn't that bad. The only way it'd be bad is if they raided right away. Because we don't have a second story. I don't have the garage doors in currently. We watch for a bit for a bit smiley face but hopefully before they do anything we'll at least have time to bring the garage doors from the two-story two by one over to the two by two um because with garage doors we could actually defend a raid so, wait are they leaving they're just the only two are leaving this is weird i don't know what's happening this is very bizarre 
Spawn back. Okay. They had left on a Scrappy, which was definitely more than two of them, but only two of them came back on a minicopter. And despite seeing a base being built right outside their gate, they didn't stay and try to deal with it. They, they just left back on a minicopter again. What? What is happening? Okay. I'm gonna just go watch from the trees. See if I can make it to the two by two safely. Who's, wait, who's this? Who's this hazmat kid? What is he doing on my two by one? But he doesn't live there. Or maybe he does. And he's looking at the 2x2 two two I made, and he's like, what the hell is that? <laughs> I have no clue. Can't let him see us, though. You ain't gotta be quiet. 2x2. Two two. What? Uh -oh. <laughs> this is awkward. Who is this guy? Who is Panda? What? This, I don't recognize this name. Ah, what the hell? Who? I am so, dude, I am so confused. Do these guys live here? Ow. <laughs> I don't think those guys are aim because I don't know they were looking at the base all sneaky kind of like me I thought the guy beside the tree in the boots was yoing. I was so confused oh I don't know why the Tommy kit in here I could say hello to them again I'm gonna try to find this guy's profile panda maybe he is with aim He's their eighth member or something? Oh, I could kill this guy outside. Oh, this isn't Panda. That means Panda's gonna be coming. <laughs> I actually don't know how many of them there are. Or where they're gonna come from. Well, there's one chasing me on a horse. <laughs> oh shit. There's another. Throw that on the ground. Oh, he has a horse too? Are there more? I think that's all of them. Was the Sky Panda? Lost Goose. Okay, so these guys weren't. These guys are named. 100%. Ah, Panda with all my stuff. Thank you, buddy. <laughs> they gotta be so mad. He gets for trying to beat me up with my own rock. Hmm. Oh, M2. That's from their roof. What What are they shooting at? Now, looking back on this, I didn't fully think it through at the time, but right after I killed those three guys, Panda and his pals, outside of my two-story two-by-1, I changed my name. Because my thinking was, then, that they knew that I lived in the two-story two-by-1, and if I continued to kill them around the area, maybe they would raid it, and I didn't want that to happen. But now, in hindsight, I realized my use for the two-story two-by-one was simply to see when AIM left their base, which they had. Once I brought over the garage doors that were in the two-story two-by-one surveillance station over to the two-by-two, two, I wouldn't need the surveillance station anymore, so it getting raided wouldn't be that big of a deal. But that explains why I changed my name, if you guys were curious. Okay, now, I just need to make them pretty mad. 
<laughs> it's kind of crazy the entire plan relies on them raiding this base, you know? <laughs> but I mean, at some point they're going to, whenever they, they actually come back from, they all come back from what they're doing, or I don't know, if I piss them off enough. So I'll, uh, I'll build over and see what's inside their compound. I don't hear any doors, so they must be out. And all their furnaces are... Oh! Some sulfur, nice! Their turrets are off. There is someone outside the gate. Is that Yoink? Uh, nope. Maybe it's one of them and they're looking at the base. Uh, there's a heli. Is it them? Who is this guy outside the gate? Why is he just running around the compound? Oh, it is them. I don't want to get caught in here. Ah, uh, this is... But only two of them can be on that minicopter. I, I s there were just four on, at least. Because I checked battle metrics. I'm gonna... F1 kill so they don't get suspicious. Confused. Check the camera. Okay. I'm taking. Oh, there are two. Okay, there are two mini copters, so all four of them are there. Oh. Someone just jumped beside my two by one. Ah, it was Yoink that spawned in. Okay, now we know they just left and they went out maybe they went to cargo or one of the oil rigs because they went out to the ocean i can pass the sulfur through the gate or something to yoink just to secure it all right they are coming back what <laughs> what yoink's gonna get seen yoink inside <laughs> they have to have seen us. They have to have seen that torch. Wait, what? What? Where? What? I guess I'm gonna have one and look through the camera. See, I just don't know what's. I don't. I don't know where they could have gone. That they're back. Cause I was like three minutes. They left and they're back. Wait, Yoink's dead. Are they raiding the two by two now? The rockets coming from there. Oh my god, they're raiding it. Spawn here. Oh no, dude, did we really F1 kill out of the 2x2 two two and they immediately started raiding it? Oh, I don't even think I have a sleeping bag in there. Oh my god. Did they get a gear set from this base? There's not a chance I make it in time, though. Shut about five rockets and stopped. Oh, they could have gone through doors. They could. Mm. I can probably creep up to them and kill them if they're inside. I don't hear anyone. Wait, the door's still on. What? Wait. Wait. They can't be in. I shot four, five rockets max. They can't be in, right? Wait. Oh no. Oh no, dude. It's not aim, is it? It can't be. 
Are they on? They're not in game? Oh no. Oh my god. Oh my god, I need to change my name back. <laughs> I. <laughs> what are the. <laughs> By now, you guys probably realized what was happening, but at the time, until that moment, I didn't. But the guys on the roof of AIM's base were not AIM, and those rockets being shot were not being shot at our base. I thought that everything was going according to plan. Obviously, the reason I was a little tense at the time was because we weren't fully prepared to defend a raid from AIM at that moment, but that wasn't AIM that was shooting rockets. You see, the last time I had actually checked if AIM was online was 45 minutes to an hour prior, and I had used battle metrics, an infallible way to tell if someone was online, and they were online, four to five of them, like I said. And so I watched them through my camera station and all the helicopters going to and from their base made me think that that was AIM, still online, going out and about, doing stuff. But now in hindsight, I could clearly see that at that time when I had confirmed that they were still online, they were closing up shop, ready to go to sleep for the night. And this group that was on their base that was offline raiding them at that moment was probably using battle metrics as well. And shortly after I checked, they had checked and saw that AIM had recently gone offline, which was the perfect opportunity to sneak in a raid. And so, that's what was happening. That's what they were doing. A group was offline raiding AIM. And I would wager quite a bit that group that was currently raiding them had something to do with all the hazmat guys that were outside their base inspecting it, sneaking around the guys that I had killed Panda and his pals. That would explain why they were there, on the corner of the map, in the middle of the desert, in the middle of the night. And you may say, Stevie, your enemies are getting raided. They're going to be done for by the morning. Why do you sound upset? Well, ever since about two hours into this wipe, all my time and effort had been going towards getting revenge on AIM. And I understood that revenge couldn't be raiding them or getting them to quit the server. I mean, they were a decent and organized group. So I set a pretty reasonable goal for revenge. I just wanted to make their time kind of miserable. Take a few kits from them, just have them fear me because it was very clear in our last verbal interaction that they didn't fear me one bit. How the f are you still in burlap? <laughs> I hate this guy so much. But even just doing that to them would be difficult. I was outnumbered, outgunned, and their base was in the perfect spot to not get messed with by some measly solo player. And that's the whole reason I made a plan. That's why I put so much time and effort into making it happen. And when I was on the brink of being able to make it happen, the opportunity was stripped from me by some group that was now raiding AIM's base. So the fact that they were currently getting raided was bad news, but don't think I just went down without a fight. I tried everything in my power to stop this raid from going through. I messaged in chat, alerting everyone that there was a raid going down, so hopefully another group would come and counter, but no one came. I added every single AIM member on Steam, so hopefully one of them that was maybe online would add me back and I could message them and let them know that they were getting raided but none of them added me back. And my last ditch effort was to bring over ladders from my main base and jump in the compound, build up to the breach and try to kill them all a near impossible feat. <sighs> okay, one of their helis is gone. Now's the time to go. a lot quicker than I thought, which is bad.
We can't we can't even get up there now. Not with all of them back. We we can't see their hella either. I would say I would say that the plan should be to keep them from taking off. But we can't even see their heli, so they can leave whenever they want. <laughs> At this point, they're just we're just like fish in a barrel and they're just shooting us for fun. <sighs> Hopefully now that intro clip makes a little bit more sense to you guys. That was me lying dead on the ground, my Thompson beside me, flames all around from the incendiary rockets that the group that raided AIM had shot at us. It was all over. The grand plan had just failed because AIM no longer had a base. They were raided, they were done for by this mystery group. But who was this mystery group? Where did they live? What were their names? We had no clue at all. Well. Well, actually, we did have one name. The guy that had killed me all three times was named Beetlejuice. Beetlejuice. <laughs> For those of you that are very, very observant, you may recognize that name. It was from one of my videos over two months back. If you haven't seen that video yet and you want to, I would suggest you skip to the time on screen right now because what I'm about to say will spoil it. Now, that video, of course, was a completely different wipe, it was a different story, different adventure, different month, but it was the same server. If you recall, then, I was duoing with my pal Spicy, and our time on the server was extremely successful and enjoyable. But that's definitely not to say that our time didn't come with its troubles. Our enemy that wipe was a guy named Timmy Toothick and his group because we had been roof camped by them multiple, multiple times. But where does Beetlejuice come into all of this? Well, there was a very specific clip in that video near the end where we got into a big fight and when I was looting a body, there was the name, Beetlejuice, one of the dead guys that had a bunch of loot on him. But who was he though? What was his association to that story? Well, near the very end of the day, I died to Timmy Toothick multiple times. Here's a clip from that footage that you guys never saw in that video. I'm dead. Let's see what his name was. Doobadoob and Beetlejuice. Or is he with them? Yeah. Yep, indeed he lives with them. So that's who they are. Doodle, Bob, Beetlejuice, and Timmy Toothick. The Roof Campers. But if you remember, when that happened, it was very late at night. I had intentions of the next day getting back at these guys. Doodle Bob, Beetlejuice, and Timmy Toothick. But overnight, I was offline raided. This is how that video ended. This is what I said. I'm sure as I continue to play on these same servers, I will probably run into one of them again. So while I can't promise a revenge story to come, you better believe if I see them again, I'll make sure to wrap up the unfinished business that they left us with in this wipe. So let's not end our story here. Let's just put a bookmark in it. When I find these guys again, the book will be reopened and the story will continue. So now it's probably pretty apparent that I had disliked this guy Beetlejuice well before this wipe ever took place, but on top of everything he did back then two months ago in that wipe to piss me off, he had essentially just now snatched three days of my work away from me. Like I've been saying all my time and effort, this wipe had gone towards getting revenge on AIM and of course, that was no longer possible. So you guys can probably deduce that at that time, I was pissed. I was furious. I began to look back through my footage and I noticed a trend that you guys probably noticed as well. Every single time the minicopters left Ames base, they went out to sea. I was always confused on why they were going out in that direction and then I actually pulled up the map. What was out in that direction 
was an island. So you take a guess on where you think Beetlejuice and his pals lived. Now, at this time, I didn't have the patience left in me to make some big plan on how I was going to get back at Beetlejuice's group. I didn't even know what their base looked like, and I'll admit, I was pretty impulsive on what I did next, but that was just because I was so mad. Yoink and I ran the roads until we found a minicopter, and then we took it in a beeline towards that island. No plans at all. We were just gonna wing it and see what we could do. Something, this gotta be their base. Oh my god! It's a tank! Do have any turrets on the roof? I think that one's off. I'll land behind it. Oof. It's fine. There's one inside. Garage doors are opening. Need to bait him. He needs to take that other heli. So my thinking is, at some point they have to check the roof. Now whoever's inside, I think the rest of them are still at the raid. That's what Sketching was saying. But whoever's inside, at some point, is <laughs> gonna get impatient. Because I, I think they'll think that, that we're gone, and we just took both their helis. Oh, hello, Beetlejuice. <laughs> Come on. What an idiot, dude. No way. <laughs> I can't really see where I'm going. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. Well, I landed. <laughs> I want Yoink to see that I got his set. <laughs> said you killed him you legend <laughs> i'm actually just like baffled he knew someone could be up there and he still brought an l96 like why <laughs> i mean <laughs> they probably got plenty i'll take it you know if they want to give it to me now as good as this felt when it happened it was just temporary relief the reality was my wipe had pretty much still been entirely wasted i had no idea what to do at all it was really late at this point, and I was about to log off for the night. But before I disconnected, Yoink and I went back over to the island and set up a camera station. I mean, I didn't know what I was going to do with it, and when Yoink and I ran over, it was morning time in-game. And so we could see how big their base really was, and their compound as well, and even beyond their compound, they had external tool cupboards everywhere. And I thought aim was hard to mess with. These guys made that look like a breeze. They had their area on lockdown. Any effort we made against these guys would just be an even bigger waste of our time. We couldn't do anything. So disappointed and frustrated with how everything had played out throughout the day, I logged off for the night. And that brings us to Sunday morning, the fourth day of wipe. Now, if you thought this day was going to be any better than Saturday, you might want to lower your expectations, because it didn't start out so great. Our surveillance station on the island looking at Beetlejuice's base was raided by them, so any shred of hope, any tiny little ounce of motivation I had left in me to try to get some sort of revenge on anyone was now gone. For fun, I just set up some camera stations around my base and decided to go PvPing at launch with all of my allies. And while that was great and we killed people and got gear sets and components, I knew that no matter what happened, I just wouldn't really feel a sense of completion with this wipe. Too much had gone wrong, too much time had been wasted. So while my allies were PvPing at launch site, I decided to do a recycle run, completely unaware of what was about to happen next. That was in my base direction. Are they shooting rockets? They're all over there. Is that fight at my base or is it past it? Wait. Am I getting raided? Oh no. Holy shit, I'm actually getting raided. 
I have no clue how many doors I left open upstairs. Uh, I'm not gonna open that. Think, think. Going top down. Um, they should go through doors. If they end up going through floors, I need high qual to upgrade. Plenty of meds. Okay, I don't have any real rockets. I have a launcher, some incense, and HVs, and that's it. Wait, 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 I have cameras. They can see the roof now, I'm pretty sure. Okay, they came on a scrap heli and they crashed it. They have no way to leave, so I can play this slow. Okay, think, think, think. Those AK guys may come counter. Alright, I'm gonna go outside of the compound and to where the camera is and shoot incendiary rockets down onto the roof. Maybe flush a couple in the open and see if I can pick them off. Just make it easier. Holy shit, Augie oh, got blown up! They're rocketing again, they're inside. I need to get back inside. Okay, Yoink said that there are two of them alive, but I'm pretty sure that there are at least three or four. I'm gonna let Sketching in, maybe he tanks a rocket. I, I bait him, he tanks a rocket, and I can trade or something. Materials to upgrade with high qual. Okay, nice. And I need a hammer. Okay, that's really reassuring. The issue is I can't fight them at all. If I open a single door, like if I go up and try to open a single door, I don't know how far in they are. I'm just gonna get it rocketed. It should just uh, I'd be giving them the base. I have to pray they run out of explosives. Great, and they're opening one of my garage doors. I didn't put a lock on it. Nice. Oh, no. Uh, Alright, I need to start moving stuff down, probably. Um, I need to get the window. The TC. Grab some of that. I can't really do anything but hope that they run out of explosives, which they should. Like, they, there's no way they should have enough to go through that armored floor and then a bunch of garage doors. Oh, Molly Wop wants to be let in. Okay, they started blowing this, which is bad. I think they're out. I think they're waiting for someone to bring more explosives. Oh. Oh. Ah, I guess they are uh, not out of explosives. Oh, sketching wants to be let in. Ladder hatch, they're going through doors now, which is good. Like, that's that's what I want. It's gonna take them a lot more. If, if they ladder right now, then this, then I can open that. The sound will distract them, the ladder sound will distract them. Okay, I 
thought I was gonna get rocked. One dead. Three left, I think. dead for sure it's another dead wait did, did that say beetle juice i could have sworn that that said beetle juice what I, I can't lose this raid i cannot lose this raid Buy me some time so I can loot all this. There's still 100% at least two left up there, but they can't do anything until that fire goes out, so I'm safe for a bit. I have a ladder hatch crafted. Um, I could probably put the ladder hatch on, on the frame, through the, the hatch in the armor door. I gotta finish him before his friend comes down from the roof to pick him up. Oh, came out. So oh, that was really stupid. Now they're a door deeper. And it's Beetlejuice! Okay, I have a metal face mask. I should be able to look through the hatch and just double think someone that's in there. Okay. Okay. I'm gonna let in sketching and all them. They can ladder up now. Actually, I'll go in the front. They'll go in the top. We'll pinch them. What? How are they all dead? What? <laughs> wait, wait, what? There were... I thought there were two left when I died. How'd they even get in? Wait, wait, wait. <laughs> what of them must have rocketed themselves, the last guy. <laughs> but why did they ever come here? Like, how, how did they know that I lived here? I'm like actually half the map away from their base in the middle of the woods, just a random solo player. Like, they had to have known it was me, Sleepy. But how? I suppose now the second intro clip should make sense to you guys. That was Beetlejuice lying dead on the floor of my base. Flames all around him from the rocket that he shot that accidentally killed himself. You see, well, flying to the roof of a base that is inside of a compound is smart to do. If you were offline raiding a base, it is quite the contrary if you were trying to online a base. If said base's owner is online and they kill you, you have no way to get back to your raid. That's exactly what had happened. Beetlejuice and his group had tried to raid me, but to answer my question, how did they know that I lived there? Well, they must have done a fair bit of detective work. As you guys remember, the previous night, I, under the name Energized Goral and Sketching and Yoink, had tried to stop Beetlejuice and his group from successfully raiding AIM. We had failed to do so, but under that name, I had flown to the roof of their base and taken an AK L96 metal set off of them. And then when they woke up the next morning, there was a surveillance station spying on their base on their island. Who made that station? Well, it had to be Energized Goral. Me. Which indeed it was. But how did they know where Energized Goral lived? How did they know where I 
live. That answer was kind of right in front of them, who had been making CCTV stations all wipe long. A guy named Sleepy Boy. And how would they have known that? Well, if you pull up the map, on the border of 08 and 09, there was a shop called Sleepy's Shop that you all remember I made earlier the previous day that only looked for CCTV cameras. Remember, CCTV cameras being able to be used for surveillance was fairly new when this footage was recorded. So, when a surveillance station was made on their island using a CCTV camera, and then a shop was found only looking for CCTV cameras, they could come to the conclusion that Sleepy Boy, who had been shouting out his shop in chat, and energized Gorl, who had been the pesk from the previous night, and the person that had built the camera station, were the same person. And if you just think for a little bit, you can see that the two names are the exact same format, just polar opposites, which is just too big of a coincidence for them not to be related. So if at all they thought the two names were the same person, all they had to do was go to my Steam profile, go to my past aliases, and they could confirm their suspicion. And once they did that, my shop on the map would show them exactly where my main base was. That's how they knew where I lived. But why come raid me? Well, that was also a fairly simple answer. All wipe long, they had been doing as they pleased. They lived completely isolated. No one contested them at all. So anyone that made them slightly mad, they just raided. That was apparent because they had offlined aim the previous night and when I went over earlier this day, I had seen them raiding a base that had been placed on their island. So they probably felt invincible. Once I took that L96 AK Metal Gear set from them on their roof, that was all the justification they needed to come raid me. But unlike like everyone else, they had raided that wipe I had fought back and defended my base successfully. So, with all of this information swirling in my head, adrenaline pumping through my veins because I had just been online raided, I realized I was wrong about the grand plan, that is. You see, earlier in this video, I had explained the grand plan as this complex undertaking using multiple surveillance stations to monitor AIM, and once they were gone, making a 2x2 two two to bait them to raid the 2x2 two two so that I could successfully defend the raid, get explosives and gear sets from them, and make my way back to my base happily ever after. Victorious. Sweet revenge. But that wasn't actually the grand plan. Instead, Counterintuitively, it was my impulsive decision to fly to Beetlejuice's roof, stealing that one gear set that at the time seemed so insignificant, but had baited Beetlejuice and his group to raid my base, baited because they were never going to win. They didn't stand a chance. You should remember, in my previous video, the first part of this story, you probably thought it was pretty weird that I talked so much about my base design. I explained that it was gonna be difficult to build right off the rip because it was so expensive, but it would be even more difficult to raid. Even though I was extremely stressed when rockets were pummeling down through my base and Beetlejuice and his pals were destroying all of my doors, at their closest point to success, they were still over 20 rockets away from my tool cupboard. So regardless of what I had thought at the time, their eventual defeat in this raid was inevitable. They were never gonna make it out alive. This was the plan, the grand plan, that I couldn't resist putting in front of you guys the entire time. Perhaps it wasn't a plan by definition, because I never had intentions of things playing out as they did, but nevertheless, the events all unfolding in this manner had helped me achieve something. Satisfaction with this wipe, something that, because of everything that had gone wrong, I thought I would never find. Now, there's some things that I want to talk about, some loose ends that I would like to tie up for you guys. First, AIM. Of course, I never got the revenge on them that I'd been hoping for, that I'd been planning to get all wipe long, but that's not to say that they walked away from the wipe unscathed. When they woke up Sunday morning, they didn't have a base. They'd been raided by Beetlejuice. Their wipe was cut short. And while it wasn't because of me like I would have preferred, their downfall did bring me a sliver of satisfaction. Next. Beetlejuice. While it is not that unique of a name, which means we can't confirm that this Beetlejuice was the exact same one that I have disliked for a very long time, that I had a rivalry with almost three months back, this being the exact same server 
brings me to the conclusion that they were the same person. And even if they weren't, Beetlejuice's group offline raiding AIM, essentially wasting three days of planning and preparation that I had done to get back at AIM, is unquestionably a good enough reason to dislike them. And while yes, perhaps they walked away from the wipe unscathed, no one raided them, they probably had boxes and boxes of guns, their dominance over the server, their trend of raiding every single person that had made them even a little mad and successfully doing so, had stopped with me, which ultimately was what had given me satisfaction. Next, my camera stations that watched AIM. You guys have probably been wondering all the way since the last video why the cameras were named what they were. A bunch of random letters. That answer can be found on the first day of wipe, and coincidentally, the first time that I ran into AIM. Pay close attention to what he said. Yep, that's gonna do something. And lastly, something that I have not talked enough about at all my alliance. More specifically, yoink and sketching. You see, this wipe brought dozens of hours of footage. I had to leave so much out because I really wanted the story just focusing on my interactions with AIM and Beetlejuice's crew. But both Friday and Saturday late at night when the rest of our allies were asleep, it was me and yoink roaming around the map doing as we pleased. While he was a really good player in my eyes, he was much less experienced than I was at Rust, and so he asked me for advice and I gave him tips and tricks on how to become a better Rust player. He was always more than happy to go on every little excursion and mini adventure I had throughout the wipe while I was planning to get back at AIM, which was awesome. And sketching who I had met just hours into my adventure. I had been knocking on his window all night waiting for him to come out to propose an alliance with him. If you play Rust frequently, you would know that most people in his shoes would greet a traveler outside their base with a bullet, but he didn't, and throughout the entirety of our interactions, he was an extremely generous person which is rare to find. And you may be thinking, Stevie, the only reason these guys were so nice is because they thought it was you, but I know for a fact that that was not the case. My explanation to them for why I couldn't talk throughout the wipe was that one, my mic was really bad, and two, I was in the same room as my parents, so talking wouldn't be a good idea, both of which were a lie. But to maintain my anonymity, one time I had spoken to my allies. I'd put my friend on the phone, put the phone up to the mic and told him exactly what to say. His voice, very different from mine, would remove any suspicion that my allies had of my true identity. All right, you got it? But say say it like you're it's you're not reading it off a fucking script. <laughs> All right, say say it now, say it now. Hey, Yoink, can you hear me? Yoink, can you hear me, bro? Yo, what's going on, dog? He's talking. Yo, Sleepy, wait, what? Sleepy's talking. This is dope. Is that Sleepy? Yo, what's up, Yo, dude? Cracking, dude. Yo, Sleepy. Sketchy, what? what's what? up? Yo. Why is this the first yeah. time? <laughs> Your mic's not even that bad. This is awesome. So yes, I knew for a fact that their generosity was genuine. So after the successful raid defense in a few hours messing around the area, my wipe was coming to a close, and we all knew it. We sat atop my roof, saying our goodbyes. And even then, I still didn't tell them my identity. Not until my last video was released, the first part of this story. And then I reached out to them on Steam and told them everything. And after learning that my servers were the servers that they played on the most, the servers that this adventure had taken place on, of course, without a question, I hooked them up with a few months of VIP to all of my US servers, as well as an item of merch for my last drop. Just a small token of appreciation for how helpful they had been for being such amazing allies, truly. Without them, this story wouldn't have played out as it did. And so, this wipe came to a close. It had started where and how everyone in Rust begins, as a naked on the beach. And now it had ended, happily ever after, with memories made in between. So, my name's Stevie. Thank you so much for watching.